So Orcorp Limited, Matthew Yates. Um, Matthew is a geologist with over 30 years of in industry experience covering most facets of exploration from generative work to project development. Prior to Orcorp, he was the Joint Managing Director of Mantra Resources Limited and Managing Director of Amiga Corp, which were taken over in 2011 and 2007 respectively for a combined total of uh, Aussie 1.3 billion. He was instrumental in the acquisition of a number of uranium projects in Tanzania, Mozambique and Zambia. He's worked in Australia, Central Asia, the Gulf region and Southern, East and West Africa. Um, Matthew uh, an has an applied technical background and has held senior positions for over 20 years, including resident exploration manager in Tanzania for Tanganyika Gold Limited. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you all for coming along this afternoon and thank you, diggers and dealers, for allowing all call uh, to take the stand. I will take these as, as read. Okay, we're going to talk today mainly about the Nine Zaga Gold Project in Tanzania, where we've achieved 100% ownership. We've identified there a mineral resource estimate of over 3 million ounces at 4 grams to the tonne, completed a pre-feasibility study which gives a life of mine of over 12 years at a competitive all-in sustaining cost of just under $840 an ounce, pre-production capital of just under 300 million and this also gives considerable upside with the high gold price now with that study being completed at 1250 gold price in 2017. We have one payment due to Barrick of just over 8 million US upon the grant of the special mining licence which has been uh, holding us back in the recent times. Here in the gold fields of Western Australia we've started to acquire a quality portfolio. We've all, always considered that we'd have two limbs to our business. This is the second. Focusing on the Hobbs licence uh, around Edgedina Station, about 130 kilometres northeast of Kalgoorlie, and are steadily building a land position in Western Australia. A very experienced board of mine identifiers and builders. We have a very strong technical and commercial background, and also around about 25 million in cash to push the company forward. In terms of our board of management, um, there's five of us. We're dominated by former Equinox um, personnel. Our chairman is Craig Williams, former CEO and president of Equinox Minerals, which was acquired by Barrick back in 2011. I also was a former Equinox employee in my youth, along with Mike Clessens and Rob Rigo. Alistair Morrison um, delivered the North Mara Gold, um, gold mine in Tanzania in the early noughties with Jeff Stewart. We've got a very good shareholder base as well. We've developed this over the past three years. They include um, West Oz, Australian Super through Federation Mining, mu uh, Mutual Investments of Wallstone, Nick Georgetta, and numerous other small institutions, including, um, also including Sprott. Directors and associates still hold 12% of the company. We've bought all of these shares, so we also have a significant amount of skin in the game. The tight capital structure, and um, over 70% of the shares are in the top 20 shareholders. This is looking south from Kilimani Ridge onto Nine Zaga. This hill caps 3 million ounces. So we're waiting for our special mining license and then we're going to move this along very, very quickly. In terms of Tanzania as a mining jurisdiction, Tanzania is located in East Africa. It's a large country. Most of the mining occurs far northwest of the country in the Lake Victorian gold fields. It's the sixth largest gold producer in Africa, English law and language. There was new legislation that was brought in in 2017 that we've been steadily working through. A lot of that centred around a dispute with Acacia and the, and the government of Tanzania. That's subsequently been resolved in January of this year. And we're now waiting for the general election which should uh, take place on October the 28th and then we shall see things hopefully moving forward quite quickly. In terms of the Lake Victorian gold fields, you're meeting here um, Archean Greenstone belts with an endowment not dissimilar to the gold fields of Western Australia. You've got over 25 million um, ounces of historical production, 20 million ounces in resources and reserves within a 100 kilometre radius of Nine Zaga. We are with elephants in elephant country. As Bullion Hulu and the mighty Gator gold mines have produced significant amounts over the past 20 years. 
We hold around about 200 square kilometres, uh, of which 23 is the SML application. In terms of our um, geology we've got is fantastic. We're also mating that with uh, significant regional infrastructure. A lot of the projects in Africa um, are often challenged by lack of power, lack of water, or all of the above. We thankfully have all of the above. We have power to the north and south. We intend to irrigate uh, power in off the national grid at nine cents a kilowatt hour. We'll draw water from Lake Victoria. We have sealed roads that run to the north and south and Barrack are sealing the road uh, past site in the, in the coming years. We've also got a bridge now being built across Smith Sound and that will remove the need for the ferry. Along with that, you've got established supply chains. You're now moving into the second generation of mining. I was there when this started in 1996. And now steadily, uh, the mining infrastructure has increased over time, which makes life a lot easier. When we acquired the Nine Zaga project, gold was around about $1,080 an ounce. We inherited uh, over 100 million tonnes at a bit over a gram. We realised then that a low-grade deposit was not going to work. So we set around completely reconfiguring the resource by going back to the geology. There's over 270 kilometres of drilling put into this resource. We've done 35 kilometres of that. But we basically then used all of the core chips and reconstructed the geology with a focus on high grade. The brief to the geologist was very simple. Drop tons, lift grade, but preserve ounces. This just wasn't an exercise about moving the lower cut simply to uh, arrive at a higher uh, overall average grade. To that end, we tested our theory and, and then ran the resource model again. And then in, in September of 2017, delivered over 88 percent of uh, the resource in measured and indicated categories. The drill spacing is commonly around about 40 by 40, but locally 20 by 20, and it's drilled down to around about 800 metres vertically below surface. The deposit is all in one spot. This isn't multiple deposits along a shear zone. When you look at Nine Zaga, it is a rare project of scale and grade. The beauty about scale is that it gives you choices and optionality. As you'll see there, we're right out on the far right. This looks at only measured and indicated resources and compares us with most of our peers. Pre-feasibility study that we completed um, back in 2017, unfortunately the legislative changes have slowed things up, as I mentioned, contemplated both an open pit and an underground operation. The open pit's around about 450 metres deep with a stripping ratio of 37 to one, around about 5,000 ounces per vertical metre, delivering material into a 4 million tonne per annum plan. When we look at the profile of that mineralisation, you can see uh, that we peak at around about 11,000 ounces a metre. Um, Bill Beaumont quoted this morning the, the golden mile at 50,000, which is obviously a lot better than ours, but this is still a fairly significant metric. You can also see there that the mineralisation peters off at around about 800 metres. That's not a function of the mineralisation dying out. It's more a function of the lack of drilling. When we look at the open pit and the underground mated together, you'll see that we have a box cut that sits outside of the open pit. Open pit average feed grade is around about one and a half grams to the ton, using a 0.5 cutoff, stripping ratio of just under four to one. The underground um, will commence in the second year of operations and averaging around about 3.7 grams to the ton and basically contain around about 1.2 million ounces of the resource that we'll mine. Those, uh, the mineralisation out of the open pit and the underground are combined on 3 million and 1 million tonnes to give roughly 2 grams to the tonne that we then feed into a standard CIL plant. The ore is relatively hard, bond work index of about 21, so therefore having cheap grid power is obviously very beneficial to the project. We grind to around about 75 microns and liberate 88% and generate a gold dore. When we look at our production profile uh, with our peers, you'll see that we stand up very well. We've got Gruyere there across the top of Gold Road, 
And basically, we're going to produce around about 213,000 ounces a year over life of minus 12 years. This obviously assumes that that's just the standard resource that we've got at the moment. But you can see that it is a rare asset of long life and significant scale. In terms of the pre-production capital, this is around about $287 million. Um, that includes a contingency. It also includes a pre-strip and $10 million budgeted for the original tailings facility. <clears throat> We're then moving, once the licence is granted, straight into uh, the definitive feasibility study. A lot of the work we've already done in terms of the, the drilling and so on and so forth, but the feasibility study aims to optimise what we've got at the moment. Clearly, the PFS was done at 1250 gold. There's an obviously an opportunity now with a high gold price to look at different things like the size of the overall size of the pit, the beginning and the end of the underground. And also there you'll see if we look at a 0.5 cutoff uh, of the mineral resource estimate, you end up with over 5.2 million ounces of gold. This again gives this project op optionality and scale, and we'll be working hard on this as soon as the, as the mining license is granted. Around uh, Nine Zaga, there is significant exploration potential as well. In May this year, we delivered the uh, maiden resource for Kilimani. This is a little satellite prospect, um, just 450 metres away. There's 200,000 ounces there. Looking at the geology, we compare, and we've identified 15 other targets in the SML boundary. In terms of the permit, we're just waiting now to say for one bit of paper, that's cabinet approval for the special mining licence. We have everything else in order, so we just have to be patient and wait for the licence to come. Social licence to operate, as we know, is very, very important throughout the world, and we take this very, very seriously. Uh, we put a lot of effort into it, and we also have our own local football team and put a lot of work with the local community and all levels of government. Now just going to quickly skip into Western Australia to have a quick look at our uh, project in the eastern gold fields here. We're, as I say, focused around about 130 kilometres outside of Kalgoorlie, uh, up around Edgardina Station. Here, we're after a couple of years ago, we completed a targeting initiative that put us into this area. We've now got just under 1,000 square kilometres under granted licence and application. We've recently acquired a lot of multi-client uh, AeroMag data and, and also concluded a gravity survey. Within the Yari project, which is the central of those areas, we've got what we call the Hobbs license. Uh, this was extensively uh, explored over the past 20 years and identified zones of significant mineralization. We intend to complete some drilling here and we're starting to move to organize that now as we speak. Focus on the Hobbs license. As you can see, there's a lot of drilling. We did hear what we did similar to Nine Zaga, which is to pull all this together, identify the areas of significance, and then obviously focus our drilling around it. <clears throat> what we've then seen is super gene gold mineralization at Hobbs, up to around about 15 meters thick. It's quite extensive, over a kilometer in, in length and around about 400 meters in width. That's then mated with primary mineralisation that has never been followed up. This section highlights that, where we've got numerous significant intercepts, both in terms of uh, uh, supergene and primary gold mineralisation. In terms of Jericho and Quiboy, these are two other prospects uh, further north away from Hobbs. Here, the significant drill intercepts that we're going to be following up. Uh, plus uh, um, other geophysical attributes that we deem significant. Similarly at Yundamindra and the Bunjara prospect. When we look at Orkor now, just to start to wrap up, um, we are significantly undervalued against our peers. This graph pretty well says it all. We believe the grant of the mining licence will be a significant driver. We also intend to push forward in the goldfield, so we have two strings to our bow but we see a significant re-rating as we start to tick a few boxes and move the company forward. So just to wrap up now, um, Tanzania, uh, we've, yes, we've had challenges, but then we've taken adversity to advantage here. We've moved the company forward, secured what is probably one of the best undeveloped gold projects out there. In Western Australia, we've gone back to our roots where we continue and will continue to add value 
and you have the right board and management that have delivered before and will deliver again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Right on time. Um,